Welcome everyone as we gather for worship on Zoom or whether you're joining on Facebook with the recording afterwards. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to focus on God in this time of dedicated worship together. From different lives, from good weeks and bad weeks, bringing great times and painful memories, needing healing, needing peace, with hope in our hearts, we come to worship. We come to worship the almighty God, the King of Kings. Together, we come to worship. May our worship be fruitful and transforming of our lives, such that it might transform the world. Amen. Our first hymn today is number 529 in Mission Praise, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. So we continue our worship of God in prayer. Let us pray. We come, O majestic one, from east and west, 
north and south, to sing your praises, to rejoice in your word, to rejoice in your presence, and to hear your voice. We come, O risen one, to be made well and to tend to those things we have wounded, cherishing all you love and redeem, finding light, love and liberation in you. We come, O Spirit, to see you in creation's mirror, finding both your love and your admonition. Forgive us when we have not cherished creation, when we have not valued your people, when we have cheapened your grace and turned away. In a moment of quiet, we offer to you now, Lord God, the things which burden us, We offer you, Lord God, the ways that we wound ourselves and others. O oh, Trinity of love, give us time to change. Time to turn back and to be made well. As the planet spins, the seasons turn and refreshing breeze becomes autumn storm. We accept your grace, O oh God. We turn back to you and we pledge to follow. Amen. God, through Jesus, offers to all who repent a fresh start. Forgiveness, not just seven times, but 70 times, seven times seven. So may you accept that forgiveness such that you can walk again with spring in your step. In our prayers, we've talked already about the wonder of creation. And we're going to hear again a little about that in our first reading, which comes from the Psalms and is brought to us by John. Thank you, Judith. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You've ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which have you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet. All flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. So as we reflect on that psalm of praise and the love of God for humanity, which is expressed within it, we're going to sing again together. 
is time number 936 in Mission Praise. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. <laughs> Your spirit, teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with your heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. So I now invite Lorna to bring us our gospel passage for today. I'm reading from Mark 10, verses 13 to 16, and it's Jesus blesses little children. Some people brought children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples scolded the people. When Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, let the children come to me and do not stop them, 
because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on each of them and blessed them. Amen. Thank you, Lorna. I invite you to with me. May the words that I speak and the ponderings and daydreams of all our hearts and minds be guided by you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I think we have in this passage today one of many examples of the disciples just not getting it. If you've been following Mark over the past few weeks, you'll know that two Sundays ago, there was a discussion between the disciples that they were ashamed to tell Jesus of, but he could work out about who was the greatest. And he had brought a child into the centre and said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And last week's lectionary readings, talking about stumbling blocks on these little ones, a lot of commentators think that the child has probably still sat on Jesus's lap. So at least twice, the people around Jesus have been told that the kingdom of heaven involves putting children at the centre. So we've just heard, whoever welcomes one such child welcomes me. So what do we have in the next chapter? Immediately, the disciples are not welcoming the children, but sending them away. Being countercultural, following the way of the kingdom of God as shown by Christ is not always easy for us to take in because the things that are ingrained in us just as for the disciples, that sense that children were not really proper citizens yet, just takes so much repetition and repetition of the message for us to take in. So my first question to leave us with today is, what might God be saying to you or to us? God is, he keeps saying, and we keep not managing to fulfill because it doesn't fit with the learned behavior that we have gathered from our, our way of living, our communities, our culture, perhaps without even realizing that that is our culture. What might we have heard but need to hear again? Because we've still not really taken it on board. But then, as we turn to today's reading, Jesus brings that child, or a, perhaps another child, to the centre or multiple children and says, bring them in. Do not stop them. Again, the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. The people who are the least and the lowest are the people to whom the kingdom of God belongs. And goes on to say that those adults who were listening and us today, unless you receive the kingdom of God like a child, that's what we need to do. We need to receive the kingdom of God like a child. Because unless you receive it like a child, you'll never enter it. So I'd like to invite you to unmute or type in the chat your initial reaction response to the question, what does it mean to be childlike? When you hear the word like a child or childlike, what's the first thing that springs to mind? So 
So we've got trusting. Lots of trusting. That's what I was going to say. Being okay. silly and having fun. Being silly and having fun. Happy. Happy. Mm. There's sometimes a cynicism that comes in as we get older. Innocence. Mm. Sheila, I can see you've unmuted. Would you like to share something? I'm finding it quite difficult, really, to to pinpoint one thing. There are so many things that are, are... I'm looking back to my own childhood, and I suppose happiness is the thing that I think of most. And uh, comfort. Mm -hmm. Happiness, comfort, questions is coming in the chat. I wonder what it is that means that happiness is something we think of associating with a child rather than with our, perhaps with our adulthood. Being cared for. Maybe being willing to be cared for sometimes as a, we've sometimes so built up resilience and independence that being cared for is sometimes hard to accept. So if what I've said today doesn't strike a chord for you, I invite you to muse on those words we've talked about just there, trusting, openness, innocence, happiness, questioning, being cared for. What might it be like if we were to receive the kingdom of God in those ways? After all, the message that those disciples were sent out with when Jesus sent them into the communities around was that the kingdom of God is near. And the way of doing that was to offer God's peace and blessing. And the Bible tells us that that's a true peace, not just the absence of violence. A peace where swords are beaten into plowshares and the lions and the lambs lay together. How we need that kind of true, just peace in the world right now. What might it be like for us to receive the kingdom of God that is near? That is what we preach today. As I was saying that question I've just asked you, I was reminded of a meme that went round a certain corner of the internet a little while back, and I had to go back and find it. And it was a tweet from a person who is called Jen Dezira. She said this. My three-year-old said she wanted to be an astronaut. And I said she had to study hard, go to college, learn a lot of science and take a physical fitness test. And she shrugged and said, that's just four things. So she's basically a motivational speaker. I love in there, the optimism, the alternative point of view that sometimes we might see as naivety, but actually the wholehearted throwing in and going, yeah, that's the road, but you know what? I'm not phased by that. I think sometimes as adults, we build things up. We look at the road ahead and go, oh, that's a lot to do. And don't always therefore take the first step. Maybe it's that innocence, that wholeheartedness of a child that goes, Ah, oh, yeah, go to, learn to go to college, learn lots of science, be physically fit. Well, I can do that. That perhaps we learn to doubt as we get older. Elsewhere, Jesus says that faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. I'd like to suggest today that for that faith to work, that seed needs to be planted. 
not just to have the faith, but to do something with it. And I'd like to bring those two images together and invite us this week to take on the kingdom of God with the enthusiasm of a child that goes, the promise of the kingdom of God, of a, a true peace, a peace where everyone can live in flourishing, where there are no more tears, where everyone is reconciled, is possible. And lean into that and to act in that hope. It's a big task, particularly when the news is as it is. When we sit here on the eve of the anniversary of the hostage taking and see how that conflict which had been bubbling for so long has escalated further. It's easy for us to despair and say that peace is impossible. But the kingdom of God includes God's peace. And we are invited by Jesus to receive the kingdom of God like a child, like the three-year-old who says, that's just four things. To believe that it's possible. And I invite us today to live into that possibility. Those small actions of hopefulness that gently begin to change the wheel. Because if we give up, things will not change. But if each of us is a small thing to work with the peacemakers, the helpers that are there, the people who are bringing together those who have often been encouraged to see other humans as other, who have been taught that there is not an equality, but like the child, they are worthless. But instead of bringing people together and saying, this is a different story, where are the peacemakers? And how might we support them? What small planting of faith might you take this week? Trusting in the hope and optimism of a child that it can happen and through your actions begin to plant God's kingdom today. May God help us as we discern how to live as people who are optimistic that God's kingdom is near. Amen. I invite you now to sing with me number 456. Make me a channel of your peace.
We come now to a time of intercession, of praying for ourselves and for others. And our intercessions today are coming in the form of a prayer offered amongst the prayers for Israel-Palestine, coordinated by the Methodist Liaison Office. So let us pray. In a world that God made good, let us pray for people seeing things no human being should see. For people seized by terror no human being should experience. For people whose depths of suffering no human being should know. God of unquenchable hope, confirm our belief that this is not how things should be. Affirm our belief that things can and will be different. Strengthen our belief in Jesus. He opens the way from death to resurrection. And help us as his disciples to be your agents for change in our broken world. In the time of quiet. I invite you now out loud or in the chat or in the silence of your heart to offer to God the brokenness of this world that is most on your heart, perhaps in the worldwide news, perhaps in your local community or local church or with those you love, including yourself. Bring all these prayers to God in the name of Christ. Through the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go from this time of gathered worship to the worship of our whole, whole lives, we sing a song of commitment. Number 501 in Mission Praise. O oh Jesus, I have promised.
see the sights that dazzle, the tempting sounds I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within, for Jesus to me May the blessing of the God of peace and justice be with us. May the blessing of the Son who weeps the tears of the world's suffering be with us. May the blessing of the Spirit who inspires us in reconciliation and hope be with us now and forever. Amen. <laughs>